So welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. Kind of a uh, exciting yet sad day today. Today we are saying goodbye to the grocery getter. That's right. This is the last time you're gonna see my 2019 F-150. This has been a very good truck. Actually, it's been a great truck. It really has. I bought this truck in March of uh, 2019 so I've had it a little over four years and have put 96,000 miles on it but this thing it has been all over and has done a lot it's been on several trips out west uh, I have hauled countless loads of firewood stone mulch you know pulling the dump trailer uh, pulled equipment trailers with this truck pulling the tractors around and uh, it has been a very good truck like i said a great truck the only thing i have had to do to this truck in 96,000 miles i put brakes and tires on it that's it now the plan was to keep this truck because if you remember we recently uh, purchased this new gmc and we we're going to keep the f-150 but as you all know plans can change so I took my uh, steel plate off the truck and I cleaned it out. I have a whole box full of stuff, but it's kind of like uh, taking a stroll down memory lane. This is one of the two GoPros that I found in there. I'm pretty hard on them. But like I said, that truck's been a lot of places. I can't imagine how many trips to Sheets I have made taking Hunter to get his chicken sandwich in that truck. But I was looking at the sticker here and you know, I like numbers, right? So like I said, it's a 2019, boy, the chickens are mad at something. It's a 2019, and the sticker price was $63,095. I didn't pay that much for it. That was kind of back when uh, it was a little bit more negotiable. But I ran some numbers that I thought were pretty interesting. But that truck is the Lariat. Uh, came pretty well loaded up. The only thing that... I was missing on that truck and I can't believe I missed this it didn't have that step in the tailgate I didn't order that truck I bought it off the lot uh, the f-150 I had before that was an XLT and it had it I just kind of figured that the Lariat did it did not now that truck there it's uh, loaded with features half of them I probably never even used but yeah I really like that truck but today it goes away but before it leaves I like numbers and I ran some costs on what that truck actually cost me per mile to own and operate that I think is pretty interesting. Now the difference between what I paid for this truck and what I'm getting on trade is about $29,000. So over 96,000 miles, my ownership cost is 30 cents a mile. Now my average mileage in this truck was probably around 16 and a half. On the highway, we could get up to about 20. But I figure I put about 5,818 gallons of gas in that truck. Now just averaging at $3.50 a gallon, because we live here in Taxylvania, uh, it was much higher than that at one time, but when I bought the truck, gasoline was much lower. So averaging at $3.50 a gallon, I spent about $20,363 on gas, which works out to 21 cents per mile. Then you take tires. I did two sets of tires on this. Uh, these ones on it right now are in good shape. $2,200 in tires and maintenance. All I have done is brakes, oil changes, and uh, regular maintenance, things like that. I put another $2,000 on that. And that comes out to about 56 cents per mile was what my cost was to drive this truck. Which in today's day and age actually isn't too bad. But anyway, we're gonna hop in the truck we're gonna go trade it in and I'll show you what we got and then when I come back we'll kind of go over the uh, what and the why and uh, what's going on here so Melissa just came out she's actually uh, we, we both are that truck's seen a lot of things been a lot of places that's right it's funny how you get attached to vehicles I uh, remember that old expedition we had oh, we had an expedition I loved that thing we had an excursion too I loved that one too but Boy, the expedition, I hated to say goodbye to it. But that thing was rough. It had about 200 and some thousand head gasket. Yeah, it was rough. Multiple dents. and Guy flew in from Mexico. Mexico. 
And so I'm asking him, like, you're interviewing the next buyer of your car. Who does that, you know? And I'm like, so, you, you making this a family car for you and your family? And he's like, no, these are real popular back in Mexico. He's like, I flew in, one-way ticket, he got in it, and uh, he was driving it back. I'm like, huh. Yeah, everything checked out, and I told him, I said, hey. I was expecting, like, yeah, my wife and I. It might get hot, you got the head gasket. I told him everything that was wrong with it, and he's like, oh, we'll see how it goes, and he yeah. drove from Pennsylvania to Mexico. Yeah, but. I wonder what ever happened to that thing. I don't know. I guess those expeditions are popular, which they were great. You know, you could see. You could seat your kids plus their friends to ball practice. Was that a 97? Does that seem to ring a bell? I'm going to say 98. 98. Yeah. yeah. It, it was a great car. Because after that, we got the Excursion. Yeah. And it was a 2000. We yeah. bought it used. Yeah. Sold it with about 215, 220,000. Yeah. I'm still kicking myself for selling that. That was a nice... I had a 7.3 power stroke. Yeah. I'm the one that drove it and parked it. and. Yeah. Wow. I deserve some sort of a license plate for that. <laughs> well, I'll turn I'll the camera that. off if you want to say your goodbyes. I will. Thank you. Just a moment. All right. We are pulling into Schultz Ford. So here it is. So this is Adam with Schultz Ford. Hello. How are you? How long have you been with Schultz, Adam? 17 years. 17 years. Now, you're in the commercial truck department, right? Yes, sir. How's business? Booming. Is it? You're finally getting some stuff in. Finally getting there. Yeah, Slowly that's... Slowly but surely getting back to normal. So what can you tell me about this new Super Duty or Super Duties in general? Well, this is your brand new 2023 Lariat. It's the crew cab, eight foot bed. The new technology we love is the high output diesel, 500 horsepower engine here for you. Uh, you do have a 12, on the lariats and above, you'll have a 12 inch LCD screen for you there, as well as a 12 inch connectivity screen for all your apps, navigation, Pandora radio, audio, rear view camera, everything's right there for you through the 12 inch screen. You also have a new feature for 2023s, which is the heads up display that'll, uh, right. Yeah, my GMC has that, actually. Does it? has it? the same heads-up display. At first, I wasn't sure. I'm like, I don't know about this. It's very handy. Yeah, it, and the nice feature is you could shut it off if you don't like it. You can always disable it. Yeah. So it's there for you when you want it and when you don't want it. I've never paid much attention to, like, seats in a truck, but I sat in this for a few minutes. This is the most comfortable seat right here. Yeah, it's a beautiful seat, and then you also have the B&O stereo system wrapped into the headrest also. Okay. This is the Unleashed system with 18 speakers throughout the truck for you, too. Do these seats fold all the way back? They are max recline, yes. There is an option for them. Some do, some don't. Okay. Very nice. Let's take a look at the outside. Sounds good. All right, so we're taking a look at the back of the truck here. We were just talking about... Uh, I don't know how to open the tailgate. Just a push release right there. You can also do it off the key fob with the power lift gate. We we're just talking about getting the spray in bed liner. This is new over here, right? Yes, so this is a two kilowatt basically generator for you, power supply right inside the bed of the truck for you. Very nice. Eight foot bed. You don't see eight foot beds as often as you used to, but boy, you can fit you a lot. You don't. It, you do. You can fit a lot. They're a little rare. But as expensive as these are, I wanted something that would haul, you know, why, why not? You know why not? I mean? yeah. Fill it up. Yeah, very nice. It's got the built-in step and all you that. You have the built-in tailgate step. Folds right down for you. Railing folds up. You also have the side steps built into the bumper now, and as well as on the side rail there. Right. right even has a uh, tape measure on the... Uh, has the tape-in measure. It's got metric. I don't know what to do with yeah. that. But it's, uh, yeah. It does break it down to both, though. Your okay, inches are on you. the bottom, centimeters on the top there for you. Right. That confusing metric system. It does have your fifth wheel prep, so any, whether you're gooseneck towing or fifth wheel towing, you can mount the fifth wheel or your gooseneck in those five right. slots there for you. And you have your full power supply for the trailer there on the left-hand side of the bed rail also. This is handy. You say that's a, that's like 2,000 watt. Is that what that is? 
so you can ch uh, run power tools right out of there. Yeah. You also have the built-in LED lighting, which you probably will see minimal bright there. Bright as it is. Oh, well, yeah. The back corner post and cab. Plenty of tie-downs in there. Plenty of tie-downs. This is Ford's box link. There's four additional cleats inside the truck you could pop in there. Um, you mentioned earlier about loading up the truck. They also do a bed divider that snaps into these for mm -hmm. you. There's also different cargo management systems that you can make this a two shelf unit if you wanted. Right. A lot of functionality there for you with it. Very nice. Let's take a look at the back seat of this thing. Absolutely. You go in that side, not yep. going this side. Nice big storage here. box link we oh, spoke yeah. about. And then your jacks all mounted right here for you. You have the amp for the B&O stereo system and this cargo unit just folds down for you. I see. Yeah, both sides. Yeah, yeah. there's that lock there and this will fold down flat for you. I gotcha. Seats are just fold right up or released down by the loop of the headrest. And you have the center console here with cup holders as well. And then the second row, you have USB ports there for you, another 12 volt, and then you have a 120 volt outlet right. there also. Your heated seats, two levels for the two outboard seats, and your heating and air vent controls there for you All too. Right. Nice little storage pockets in here. Big sunroof on these. Now that's the twin panel moonroof. The back piece is just a stationary piece of glass and your front one will lift up and slide over top for you. That's the same as my uh, F-150 had the same yeah. type. It's nice. So the color is uh, Rapid Red, which is the same color as our Bronco, but I think they quit making the Bronco in Rapid Red after 21. Correct. I, okay. Now you guys sell all Ford products, obviously, but Ford and Lincoln. We have our Lincoln dealership right down the street. And you're mostly or entirely commercial, 350s, 450s, 550s. Correct. I mean, I do do personal vehicles also, whether they're referrals, previous customers. Yeah. Do well, a little bit of everything, but specialize more in the commercial. Well, I appreciate so. it. It has been uh, effortless besides taking thank some you. time, which everything takes time nowadays. Appreciate but, uh, that greatly. All right, man. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, so we picked up the new Ford uh, yesterday from Schultz Ford. Uh, we'll give you a better look at it here in just a minute. But I want to explain how this all went down. We didn't really have any plans on having two new one-ton pickup trucks. It was basically all her idea. We'll get to that in a minute. But let me explain what happened here. So, number one, we ordered this truck behind us. I had to write this down because there's a lot of dates and it's a little confusing. But it's actually kind of a crazy story here. So I ordered that truck in, uh, I think, the end of February. But on March 10th, I got an email from Ford confirming the order. That was on March 10th of this year. Then on April 25th, I got an email from Ford saying the production date was set for July 24th. And I thought, okay, that's not too bad. You know, a couple more months, whatever. Then on June 6th, I got another email from Ford saying the production date changed from July 24th to August 28th. And I'll be honest, it kind of threw up a red flag because you remember, the, tell them about the Bronco. How here long? we go again. Yeah, here we go again. Because the Bronco, months. yeah, it was probably a year and a half it took. So <laughs> they changed it to August 28th. And I thought, you know, I need to get something to be able to pull stuff down to West Virginia. And at that point, I said, that's it, I'm, I'm done. And I found the GMC with the help of Matt from Penn Fencing. He was telling me about a dealer in Butler, Baglier. And uh, matter of fact, I came home from West Virginia and I drove straight up there and I saw the GMC there and I bought it the next day, which was on June 9th. These dates matter, actually, it's pretty <laughs> crazy. So on June 9th, I bought the GMC and I forgot about the Ford. Well, on June 12th, we published a video showing the new GMC. And that video kind of took off as like 800 and some thousand views. And that was on June 12th. On June 13th, the very next day, 
we got another email from Ford and I'm expecting it, you know, the production date changed till October or something, but it said it changed to June 19th. I had never seen it go move up like that. You, yeah, know, you know what right. I mean? Mm -hmm. So they moved the production date to June 19th. I told her, I said, you're not going to believe this, but uh, now they're building the Ford like next week. And she says, what are you going to do? And I said, uh, nothing. I got a truck and I like the GMC. And we kind of left it at that because we knew by the time it was built and shipped, we had some time to make up our mind and it wouldn't have been a big deal to cancel our order or anything like that. And so then a couple weeks ago, we get an email that is built and being shipped. And uh, that's when I talked to Melissa and I said, yeah, I'm just going to call them and tell them no. And she said, why don't you get it? My thinking was this. Now, hear me out. Uh, we traded the F-150 in on it. This, um, pulling up the driveway, this is a beautiful truck, I have to say. I keep turning to look at it because it's really beautiful. And the one right here, we wanted to run them both for six, maybe up to eight months. Um, in the future, we've had plans of getting a dump truck. Uh, we have a great use for a dump truck, but what our thinking is that we would run both of them, see which one we like the best, trade it in on a dump truck that we want to run. So as of now, we don't know which one right. we'll get rid of. And the, the thinking, you'll understand more in a few months why we need like a good roadworthy dump truck, uh, but that's been something we've been talking about for a while. Yeah. And you know, the F-150 was a great truck. Uh, it, it, it was. It really was. And, and the timing wasn't exactly... Brings uh, a tear to my eye thinking that we had to say goodbye. Yeah. So basically what we're doing, one of these two trucks will go bye-bye <laughs> in, uh, I and, don't know, six or seven months. We'll have to see. Yeah. And, and they're both very nice trucks. Very nice looking. I love the looks of this. I love riding in it. I've ridden... I drove this. I didn't ride in it as passenger yet, but this is beautiful and it's very comfortable. Um, I think they're also like not related. Like they are the same pull capacity, right? Yeah, just about everything. And they're, yeah. they're basically both spec the same. In other okay. words, like this one is the FX4, which right. is kind of like the AT4, the AT4. GMC. That's got the Duramax diesel. This has the power stroke. 6.6 .6 liter. Yeah, 6.7. 6 .7. Yeah, I got that one more. 0.1 more. You know? Now, the biggest but, difference between these two trucks, this is the long bed, yeah. which is what I wanted originally. Uh, a lot of people don't buy the long beds anymore, as often, I should say, but I just wanted that extra bed capacity. So and I did not. I love that this is the shorter bed. Um, I didn't want the longer bed, and I definitely did not want a dually. Yeah, this is a I big truck. I seriously woke it? up after he ordered it. I woke up the next day and I'm like, remind me again. Please tell me you didn't order the dually. He's like, I thought about it. I'm like, you did or didn't? Because I just, the yeah. dually, come on. That's just, this is already going to be tough enough to park. Yeah. The other difference is uh, the GMC has power running boards. The right. Ford does not. Yeah. Pretty nice in the GMC, but I'm saying down the road a ways, mm -hmm. probably best not to have them. You know what I mean? This one has like the lights on the fenders. This one doesn't have fenders, let alone lights on the fenders. They both have sunroofs. Yeah, both have and clearance lights. they both have life. lights across the, the top of your, your window shield. Clearance they, lights. I always say an F-250 or F-350, I don't care what year it is, they just look better with clearance lights. Yeah, okay. You think so? Okay, yeah, they, they look nice. Yeah, it's like a truck truck, Melissa. Oh, yeah, okay. So they also have the mirrors that move in. Yeah. And this is all within the five minutes that I've had to get to know this truck. And they have the step to get look into your bed. Oh, the tailgate situation. Ford, it's just a tailgate. You know what? There's so much to go over between these two. We'll do a whole separate video on... All, yeah, I'm just all, briefly sharing. Now, um, one thing... On the Ford, it's really nice for 23. You got 2,000 watts of power in the bed. I know. The GMC's 400. That would be like a couple refrigerators. And you, I know. An oven. <laughs> yeah. Washer dryer. Yeah. So your power goes out, you just need to back your truck up and plug her in. So with that being said. Uh-huh. So that's basically the story on how we ended up with two trucks. Yeah. It won't be forever that we have them. Yeah. Um, and I know it's really not feasible, but the I think I'm converting into a truck 
if it were a truck family. You always used to drive trucks. Ah, I told you. The excursion, the expedition. I love the trucky, like SUV. Yeah. Bigger ones. The excursion was a held more kids. great vehicle. But, and I love the Bronco, but I'm, I'm just moving towards the truck. You know, Maybe we trade the Bronco going on the dump truck. Trade the Bronco on a dump truck. We can talk about that in another video. Something's going to go. I'm <laughs> Something <laughs> or someone. Something will go. I just We're just not sure what yet. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, at some point I will do a video sometime in the near future going over all the features on both of these. Uh, I need to put some miles on the F-350 before we tow with it. Yeah. I'm not sure what's I recommended. Can do that. Yeah, you can, you can do that. But it will be interesting to see, like driving to West Virginia, say mm -hmm. with a 10,000-pound trailer. Yeah. Two trucks almost spec exactly the same uh, mileage you know, with. With oh, trucks like this, I know what you I know mean. what you need? What? Horses. No, we don't need horses. We've got plenty of horses under the hood. <laughs> 475 in that uh, power strip. Change the subject real quick on that. You know one of the things I like most about the Ford? You'll never guess, Melissa. Hmm. Give me a minute. Give You'll me, never guess. Give me a hint. A 45 gallon fuel tank. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're not a big fan of that when you fill it up, but like a trip out west, I'm anxious to see. You could probably get, I'm just guessing, 850 miles out of a tank of fuel, maybe even better than that yeah. on the highway. Uh, some of our trips out west, that's what I always liked about the grocery getter, had a 35 gallon tank. Yeah, it did. I could get it up to 20 miles per gallon when I was driving it. Best she could ever do was 19 because Melissa, you know, I love her to death. I do. But, but when she drives, she thinks her feet, both feet have to be doing something at all times. I'm like, just that left foot, just put it off, off to the side. So she's kind of like foot brake, foot or gas brake, gas brake. But yeah, I could get 20 out of the grocery getter. She could get 19. Hey, the pedal's there, you might as well use it, you know? <laughs> right. right. So we'll see what happens, but let's wrap this video up by taking it for a little ride. And uh, yeah, we need to go get milk. We do? We're out of milk. Well, that's the new grocery getter then. <laughs> Can you get up in here, Melissa? <laughs> Heave ho. <sighs> oh. We gotta show them what the seat does before we do anything. Oh, right. Hold on, let me come around the other side. Okay, we've all seen seats recline before. But, back door's locked. Fully reclined. <sighs> Now you can't drive like that. Even the passenger, I read, it will it will chime, and I don't know if oh, you really? know for safety. They don't want you riding like that. I meant okay, huh? So I have to pull over to nap. Yeah, because when you said you can't drive like that, I'm like, I bet you I could. <laughs> This would be good for my appear out of nowhere trick. Ford went with the uh, full digital screen. No more regular gauges. Giant screen over here. Yeah, I like that. Seats are very comfortable. Not just laying down, but just. Very comfortable and they're air conditioned. Whew. Just when I thought it was cool. Now I'm really cool. Oh, push this button, Melissa. What's going to happen? Push it harder. Ah. Can keep my essentials in there. Pew, pew. Pew, pew. All right, let's hit the road.
Oh, I'm breaking arm getting out. That's all for today's video. Thanks so much for being here. We'll see you on the next one.